Hello everyone, I'm Jane Bunting. I run the studio at Clapham and uh, I'm having lots of fun and games during the lockdown. But one of the things on my to-do list was to actually uh, make a video for be complete beginners who are hoping to throw on the wheel of how to throw a cylinder. Now, there are many ways to throw a cylinder. My, I'm just going to do it my way. I'm going to break it down into nice, easy sections. There'll be quite a bit of editing in this video because I want people to really understand where to place their hands and what to do with them. Uh, and so apologies if, if it's a bit long-winded. Today we're going to be using one pound, two ounces of clay in old money. That's about 500 grams, which is the size for a decent tall mug and uh, where I'm going to be throwing with St. Thomas's stoneware clay uh, which is a great clay to throw with that isn't too expensive. Before we kick off I just want to go through the basic throwing tools so I always have a sponge the, this is a mud tool sponge they're quite expensive but my god they're really good and uh, I, I, I always buy these now, I prefer them, they last a long time and they've just got the right shape and, and texture to really handle well on the wheel. The other thing I have is a stick, it's been got a bit of a chamfer on the edge, sometimes I use an old wooden ruler that's been cut in a similar way, you want something with a nice pointy edge. I also have a rib, it's up to you whether it's a firm rib or a hard rib but this is used for shaping your pot, don't always use it but it's useful to have one. The other thing I have is what is known as a throwing needle, these are great for trimming the top if your top of your pot gets uneven, it makes life a lot easier if you can cut it off using one of these needles. I have a bit, a bit of old chamois leather and cut off a car washing cloth just in a rectangular shape and this is used for shaping the rim. So one chamois leather, one rib, one throwing stick, one needle and a sponge. And Last but not least, a wire to wire your pot off at the end. Right, for the sharp eyed amongst you, you will notice that I am actually throwing on a thing called a bat, which is actually a wooden bat that fits on pins that are on my wheel. Uh, there's two holes here, I just locate the pins and press it down and it has a, a sort of a square cut out uh, which pops out at the end so I just have to throw the pot on this part and it make, makes it much easier to remove from the wheel without being distorted. However, if you don't have a wooden bat on your wheel, don't panic. There are different ways of adding one or you can manage just on the wheel head, it just means that you're going to have to wire off at the end. Now, there are, one of the advantages of a wooden bat is it makes things easy to come off at the end, but it also means that when you're placing a ball of clay on there for the first time to centre, it takes more effort to actually get it stick to the, the wheel. Now, I would, I would suggest that for all you beginners out there, don't have the wheel going full speed when you start to put your ball on there. Your chances are you might lose it across the room. What you need to do is just place it on the wheel, press down, the wheel isn't going at all at the moment, manually press it down and spin the wheel with your hand while you do it. Make sure it's nice and firm and then get the wheel going and with my left hand I'm going to press down with the clay whilst using the index finger on my right to just try and get that to fix. Now you can see from that 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 clay ball is not in the centre. So this is how I centre clay. First of all you need to make sure that you're in the right sitting position so that your arms and your body 
are totally immovable because if you are wobbling all the, over the place, the chances are that ball of clay will push you out of the way and make you wobble more. So you want everything tucked in, elbows tucked into the side. I rest my arms on my thighs. At this stage, you want the wheel to be going fast. The faster it goes, usually the more it helps you at the beginning stages of centering. Now you can see, as if you're not sure whether your ball is centered or not, just put your finger there and if it's bouncing about, it's not in the center. So centering, once you get the hang of it, it's easy, but it takes a little bit of effort to get there in the first place. So I've got the wheel going fast and what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my hands and very gently pull the clay towards me until my hands stop wobbling and as you can see it just didn't quite stay on the back there so I will do that again so I don't know if you can see that but my hands are staying in one place and that ball of clay is nice and centered it's my finger isn't bouncing about on it anymore so all you need to do once again to bring the clay back into center at any time just gently but firmly pull the clay towards you whilst keeping your hands and arms really steady so we're now going to do stage two which is coning this is where we get the clay into a nice consistent condition where we're distributing the level of dampness any lumps in there and getting rid of any air bubbles and you must must have the wheel going pretty damn fast when you're doing this if your wheels too slow you will really struggle so always you need to make sure that your clay is wet it's got a nice shine to it but don't tip loads of water all over it you'll end up sitting in a swimming pool and drowning your clay and if you feel it dragging at all you need to add more water I have a, a sponge in my uh, jug of water which I use all the time and I make sure that when I put water on it I actually put water on it I've seen people do this it's not a bag of chips and you're not putting salt and vinegar on it you need the water to actually get on the clay so to cone what I do I call it it's almost like saying your prayers and I often call it that to my uh, customers so I want you to squeeze your hands together and then you'll have the clay in the middle and as you squeeze it together you pull upwards and I'm pulling up and squeezing with these parts of my hands just the heel of my hands so I'll just demonstrate that so hands together clay in between Everything's nice and steady and tucked in. And I'm just going to keep squeezing my hands together. Now, if you keep doing this and holding on to it, you'll lose more clay than you've got left on there. You're just scraping it off, so nice and steady. Let that clay spin round in your hand and get it up into a cone. Now I don't know if you can see that, but there's quite a lot of ridges along there. That's what you need to get rid of. And I know quite a lot of people struggle with this, but I get rid of this and make the cone go down by actually bending it over. Now, I'm going about, if you imagine that's a clock face, you should always be working with the wheel going away from you. Otherwise you're gonna catch your work and it all goes terribly wrong from there. So to make the cone go down, if I was to just put pressure straight down, I've got all the force coming back and chances are I'm gonna knock it off center. So I use the advantage of the wheel spinning round to just gently take that clay off center and press down and it more or less puts itself back in its place. Now I want to cone up and down at least three or four times, more if it's porcelain, to make sure that that clay is nice and smooth. And basically, doing this process is the same as when you wedge it 
or knead it before you start. So I've combed up, you see it's looking much smoother now. Taking the very top down, facing it towards two o'clock and then I'm pressing gently down following the clay as it spins back into place. And I'll repeat that again. So coning up, hands together, squeeze. Now, I don't know if you can see, I've got a bit of a dimple in there, which is a hole, a bit like a tea spout. We don't want that because if I close that up, that's trapping air. And I'd rather not have air bubbles in the clay while I'm throwing. It especially throws it off. It makes it more difficult, makes it feel more off center. It's a myth that it actually causes pots to explode. What happens is moisture uh, actually gather, stays in the air bubble, it gathers in the air bubble, and once it heats up in the kiln, it's the steam that comes out of that moisture that will cause an explosion. So either way, air bubbles are not a good thing. So I'm just using my finger to press down and get rid of that air bubble. Not everyone does them, I think it's part of my technique, uh, but I do seem to get them from the way I actually place my hands quite a lot. So now I've combed up, no air bubbles. Take the comb down, bend it over towards two o'clock, and then down. Okay, and then just one last time, I'm gonna demonstrate that. So hands together, squeezing, with the bottom parts of your hands. Pick it up, make sure I've not got any little pelts in there. Nice tall cone, nice and wet. And then take it down. And just to check that it's still on centre, I'm going to pull it towards me. Okay, so now we've got as we're throwing a cylinder, you're better off actually having a cylinder to start with, rather than having a, a round shape or a, tall, so, or a tall cylinder. So what we want to do is just make this about the shape of a hockey puck. Now I do that by wetting the clay, and the way you position your hands is really important. Often I see people, they'll put this bit at the bottom and press in, and it means you end up with an undercut, which is a pain in the neck. So you need to make sure that your hand is shaped outwards like that. So whilst I'm pressing this hand in, my right hand is going to do like a karate chop on the back. So if I just come round, you can see hands pressing in like that. I'm still going quite fast on the wheel. And then I'm pressing down. Just make sure that clay is nice and wet. And so I've ended up with kind of a flat donut shape or a hockey puck shape with nice straight sides. So now is the time I want to think about the size of my pot, how and how wide I'm going to do it. And this bit is really important. We're going to go in with our thumb or a finger but we want that to be dead centre. If you go off and your finger isn't straight down, if you've got it at an angle or anything odd like that, it will throw your pot out. So I want to make sure that my finger is absolutely going to go down in the right spot. In fact, I'm going to use my thumb. And I usually measure roughly how deep my thumb can go by leaving the thickness of about a centimetre on my little finger and then I measure where the top of the clay comes so I know that I can go that deep into the centre of my pot without it becoming a napkin ring. So I'm going to go straight down, hold your hands steady, nice and steady, going to go straight down and straight out again. And that hole is pretty much in the centre. You'll know if it's off centre because it, you immediately start to get a bit of a wobble. Now I'm going to fill that with water. And the next stage I want to do 
is to pull out the sides of my pot. Now I know from experience that I need the, if I'm going to turn this into a mug, it needs to be at least three, three inches to three and a half inches wide. I would, I would say three and a half. And usually I have a, a ruler here, but I haven't, it's disappeared. So I'm just going to guess on this one. But it's really important when you pull the center out, you're pulling out towards six o'clock. You're pulling directly towards you. Your hands are nice and steady. Your fig finger isn't digging in or coming up. If it digs in, you'll end up with a big ridge and a big thick lump in the bottom like that. And so if that's the side of your pot and you dig in, you'll end up with a lump there or it goes the other way, which you don't really want either. So straight in, nice smooth movement, pull down and pull outwards. And if it feels a bit dry, just put more water in. That's it, and I'm just gonna do a little bit further. That's it. So I'm guessing that that is about three inches, three and a half inches. I'll just go and find a ruler and we will see. There you go, there's a ruler. That's bang on, three and a half inches there. Now, at this point, I want to slow my wheel down. I want to have much more control over what's happening with my pot. I also want to make sure that I'm spreading the base on my pot. In other words, if you imagine that if you dig your garden and you pour water on it, the water goes through to the bottom. It starts sinking away really quickly. Whereas if you dig your garden over and then go over with a roller, the water doesn't sink through. We don't want the water to sink through to the bottom of that pot if we can help it because if it does, it takes longer to dry out and you end up with a cracked bottom and no one wants a cracked bottom. So we need to compress the bottom of that and I do it just using the pads of my fingers. Nice damp hands and all I'm doing is running my fingers backwards and forwards gently like that on the bottom and just flattening it. Not pressing hard, I don't want to be, dig broke holes in it. This is also the opportunity to go right up to the edge. So I've got a nice right angle to the edge of my pot. Now, if you want to, you could use a damp sponge, really important. If you drop the sponge and go chase it, you'll never catch it. Or if you do, you mess up your pot while you're doing it. So it's really important. If you're using a sponge, wrap it round your finger. So in between thumb and index finger over the top, and you've got a nice firm hold to take any excess water out. Now, you can see from the side of this that this isn't straight. So the first move I'm going to do, while the wheel is slower, is I'm going to just run my thumb, pressing towards the center up the side of that pot, very slowly and gently, just to even out the sides. And then I'm going to do something to flatten that top. So you want to have your fingers in a letter A. So on my left hand, they're going each side of that piece of clay and they're pulling upwards. Whilst with my right hand, I've still got the sponge in my hands if I need it, I'm going to press down. That's where the letter A comes from. So I'm pulling up and pressing down just to even out and straighten that top. So I've got a nice flat top. If you don't do that, you end up with a pot with an uneven rim. Uh, it goes a bit like a helter-skelter. Now, talking of that, certainly one thing to bear in mind, we start off the, with the wheel going really fast. You then about half the speed when you start doing more delicate uh, shaping as we are at the moment and then you get even slower still as you start to pull
pull the sides of your pot. Now, because we're throwing a cylinder, and really, physics tells this pot it would rather be a bowl because the centrifugal force will throw out the sides of the bowl, naturally. So, I always start my cylinders by throwing them inwards. And I call this move a left hand grab or a praise to the pottery god. So I'm getting my hands. My left hand goes in at six o'clock here, right at the very base of my pot. My right hand, the thumb, goes on top of the thumbnail. So I am pushing with this hand and I'm making sure that the outside of my pot is nice and wet and I'm going to raise my hand slowly pushing towards the centre of the pot. Okay, so pushing slowly and you will see as I push, I get you get to the top bit, there's a bit of drag. The thing is don't panic, keep going, keep going and then pull your hands away. Don't worry about any bits of slurry, just wash them off. And then, because I've moved the clay, going to do a letter A, and just flatten that top. So we now have a cylinder that is going inwards. And the sides are nice and even. I've got a little bit of water in the bottom of that pot, which I'm just going to mop out. I don't want water sitting in there too long, even though a few minutes later I go and add more water to it. But each time I do that, I'm compressing the base and cutting down on the possibility of getting a crack in the bottom when it's fired. Now I'm going to slow the wheel again, just slightly. I don't want it going too fast as I'm going to be start pulling up the sides. So that's about the right speed. Now, it's really important, especially at this bit, I always work looking in a mirror. I don't know if you can see that, but up there I have a mirror. And that's what I look at when I'm throwing, especially when I get to this stage because I don't want, I can't really see looking directly down what shape I'm pulling, but if I can do it in the mirror, it's a lot easier. Now, it's really important at this stage that you're in a good seated position, your back is nice and straight, and you can get right over that pot because you're going to be pulling the sides upwards. Now, I'm gonna explain the hand positions for this. The first thing I want to do is I want to dig a groove right in the bottom of that pot using my thumb. So I got my thumb and I just made it so that I've got a little ledge of clay which is where my knuckle is going to go underneath that. If you prefer you can use a sponge wrapped around your finger that's wet and put that underneath that. Now that knuckle needs to meet up with this finger and we need to make sure the pot's nice and wet. Now I call this my, my t first of all you need two fingers, each side of the pot, dribble water down and you'll see you've got a nice coating both inside and out of the pot edge. I then take this finger, often used in other gestures, usually while I'm driving but I'm being good today that wants to meet up with my knuckle. So I put that in at about four o'clock and these three, two other fillet fingers follow simply because it's easier to put them in there. But what's, rather than have them hanging out, it helps give this a bit more support. So this finger and my knock, knuckle have to meet, but then I've got two loose hands and I don't want that because I want my hands to be one solid piece of equipment really to lift and to work steadily together because if they don't I tend to throw the pot quite wonky so I want my fingers to go in here and then this finger fits on this knuckle 
and my thumb goes on the top of my thumb knuckle. So I end up with the clay going in between here, like so. So I do that, I make sure I'm nice and moist, and then looking in the mirror, over the pot, I do my first lift. Now when I get to about a centimetre, about here, I stop pressing. I'm not pressing particularly hard, and this is where the practice is, it comes in, because it's just knowing how far you can push it, how much you can press, etc. So I've just done that first lift. I'm going to repeat the process again, but before I do that, I'm just going to mop out all the water that I just put in there and compress the bottom again. Okay. I'm also, because I moved the pot, doing letter A. Now I tend to throw my mugs quite thin. Uh, it's probably a bad habit I've got in uh, after throwing with porcelain, but I don't like really thick mugs. So I usually find that within three throws, I've got my mug to the right sort of thickness that I want. Okay, so I'm gonna do the knuckle in again. Drain water all down. So nice wet the sides. Knuckle under here. Fingers joining up on this side. Two fingers resting here. Get right over the top. And then pull that ridge of clay up. And lift. And as I get towards the top, ease off on the pressure and slowly pull away. I always say, pretend you've got an extra inch uh, before you pull your hands away. It just makes sure that they're clear because sure as eggs is eggs, that's the bit where you're going to catch. Okay, so then do a letter A at the top, just to flatten that rim and mop the water out. Now, I've still got quite a bit of clay in the bottom to pull up so I'm going to do another pull fingers in and then slowly but surely raise the sides of that pot pressure as I get towards the end. Pretend there's an extra inch, so we'll slowly move the fingers away. And so I now have a nice tall cylinder. Now I'm just going to shape this a little for a mug. Now it may seem really big, but remember that clay shrinks as it's fired and what seems like a big mug soon turns into an espresso cup in my experience. Uh, I think the shrinkage on this clay is about uh, between 10 and 12 percent. Uh, so that's quite a big difference. So I like my mugs to have a nice shape. So I'm, not, so I'm just going to finish off. itself and then I want to make a nice fine lip and I do that using a bit of chamois leather so it needs to be nice and wet and slimy sorry to all you vegans out there but there's nothing in my opinion that tops using this 
you can use bits of plastic I think or you could try with the sponge and your fingers but what I have is this nice piece of chamois leather which I fold over so the folded edge is towards me and I make a loop out of that which I then put over the top and I'm not pulling downwards I'm got the loop and I'm pressing my forefinger and my thumb together to make that lip nice and thin and I like my these to come out slightly I find that it makes a really nice comfortable drinking position and it stops me dribbling my tea down my chin so once I've shaped the top and I'm happy that it's nice and thin and I've got a nice rim that I don't mind putting in my mouth I'm just going to finally trim off that pot using a pointy stick you can't beat a pointy stick so the first thing I want to do is make this edge nice and neat and so if that's the edge of my pot on my hand what I want to do is put the stick in and then lift it upwards to 45 degrees to just get the rim nice and straight so going in and then meet it up pull the corner up just to meet the edge so I've got a nice can you see that hopefully you can nice neat edge then the last thing I want to do is take turn the stick over the flat pointy side I want to just tuck under here and do a little cut don't go in too far probably about half a centimetre and you can see I've got a nice little undercut there that is for putting the wire through so even though I'm on a bat and I'm going to leave this mug on the bat this is the same principle if you're on a metal wheel head you want to wire off but have your fingers so make sure that wheels going round really slowly don't it's too far, fast and the wheels a bit wet as you wire off your pot will spin off so nice and slow both fingers straight on the board and then I'm going underneath and just making sure that that pot is going to pop off of that bat as it dries and then I'm going to stop so I don't know if you can see how clean my wheel is I've not got gallons of slip or anything there I can see my pot the inside of my pot I'm going to just take this board off now this is by the way the best device ever it's from the Dulux Decorator Centre and it's for taking paint in lids off but it is also perfect for lifting these little bats out of the back holder okay so that's the cylinder nice and dry inside and that's my mug it's quite thin and uh, voila so carry on go and make some cylinders <laughs>